Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze Tucker Carlson's interview of Kanye West? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of Kanye West, summarize the interview, then offer my analysis. Kanye West is a well-known and successful musician. At some point, he legally changed his name to Ye. From 2014 through 2022, Kanye was married to the social media influencer, Kim Kardashian. They had four children together. Kanye has stated that he has bipolar disorder and has experienced symptoms like hallucinations and paranoia. He has made various unusual and bizarre statements and has been involved in a number of controversies over the years. For example, he has suggested that Satan is involved with vaccines. He said that evil conspirators are trying to keep people out of heaven by implanting microchips in them, and he launched a presidential campaign which ultimately and predictably failed. On March 2, 2022, the same day that Kim Kardashian was declared legally single, Kanye released a music video for a song titled Easy. The video featured clay animation figures. A figure that looked like Kanye West murdered a figure that looked like Pete Davidson, who was Kim Kardashian's love interest at the time. I have a separate video about that incident. In October of 2022, Kanye was suspended from Instagram and Twitter after posting anti-Semitic remarks. Now moving to a summary of the interview with Tucker Carlson. In early October 2022, Kanye sat down for an interview with Tucker Carlson, who is a well-known conservative talk show host on Fox News. Tucker introduced the interview by talking about how Kanye had recently worn a shirt containing the phrase, White Lives Matter, during Paris Fashion Week. This led to outrage from various people on the left, like Rolling Stone, who accused Kanye of extremism, and the New York Times, who said there was no excuse for his behavior. So, as the interview starts, there's the sense that Kanye has engaged in behavior which has attracted the ire of the left and endeared him to the right, which explains why Tucker Carlson is interviewing Kanye in the first place. Here's a summary of the interview. Much of this is paraphrased, and I changed the order around a little bit for the sake of efficiency. There were many tangents in the interview, which I will mention at the end of the summary. Kanye starts by talking about how he is pro-life. He doesn't care how people feel about his position. Kanye indicated that he performs for an audience of one, and that one is God. Kanye talked about how when he first started supporting Donald Trump, people around him suggested that it would be dangerous for him and damage his career. Kanye implied that God made him into a warrior to fight the current battle with the media, who has a godless agenda. Tucker Carlson then asked Kanye West to explain what the White Lives Matter t-shirt meant. Kanye responded that he promoted the statement because it was true. It was a feeling that came about due to brilliance, instinct, and a connection with God. Kanye believes that there is a liberal mob who tries to influence people. The media is trying to promote the idea that it's okay to be overweight, but Kanye believes this is demonic. He was bullied by Hollywood and could not speak his mind. He was careful about advertising his support for Donald Trump. He was not able to have a say in his children's lives because of this liberal group and companies which they operated. Kanye believes his children have been put into a school which is designed to indoctrinate them into this liberal conspiracy. Kanye found out that Josh Kushner owns 10% of a company that Kanye started with Kim Kardashian. Kanye only owns 5% of that company. He has an issue with Josh because Kanye is talented and Josh is simply a venture capitalist who doesn't bring anything of value. Kanye talked about politics, including presidential politics. He said that neither Republicans nor Democrats feel as though they owe black people anything. Kanye declared that he will be president someday. Kanye discussed his thoughts on liberals trying to control influencers and artists and how they must be upset because they can't control him. 
is extremely powerful, and if he became evil, the world would be in a lot of trouble. The evil liberal conspirators are desperate to recruit Kanye. Here are a few tangents and kind of random thoughts of Kanye that didn't necessarily fit into the rest of the interview. Kanye talked about his mother earning a PhD and being influenced to move to Chicago, thereby separating Kanye from his father. His mother was a victim of these liberals, like the liberal conspiracy. Kanye said that Kim Kardashian has been asked to model in a way that's inappropriate. This appeared to be a statement about morality. Kanye used an analogy about Tanya Harding and connected that to him being a warrior for God. Tanya Harding was convicted of conspiracy to hinder prosecution in connection with an attack on a figure skating rival. I have a separate video about her. Kanye said that major pharmaceutical companies should invest in small farms in order to use less pesticides. He proclaimed that he is like Nikolai Tesla and is not even a scientist. He said that atheists love the term narcissism and suggested that he should not hire atheists to do work for him. Kanye thought that people write him off as crazy, but they will not be able to do this after seeing his disposition in the interview with Tucker Carlson. So Kanye looked at his performance during the interview and thought, this will silence his critics as to his mental health issues. Now moving to my analysis. There have been a variety of reactions to this interview with Kanye West. Some people were able to find meaning or insight in his narrative. Others are confused about what he was actually trying to say. They're not really sure that he understood what he was trying to say. There has been speculation about his motives. Was this really about expressing his political views, or was this a way for him to vent his personal feelings about recent events in his life? Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me during this interview. Item number one. The content of the interview is fragmented and tangential, but at least one theme emerged. It was about Kanye being betrayed and losing power. He believes no one is listening to him. No one is taking him seriously. In the past, people would support him, trust him, and be amazed by his ideas, but lately he is being dismissed as having mental health challenges. Kanye has sustained a series of losses, and he is trying to find a way to become influential again. He believes that everyone around him is not really paying attention to him or respecting him. Kanye wants to regain his authority. I think what could be happening here is that Kanye's mental health symptoms have caused others to alienate him. They're looking at him differently. He realizes this is happening, and he is protesting against this reaction. Item number two, I think that Kanye is taking his experiences from interacting with a relatively small group and expanding them to a larger political narrative. He knows that complaining about people close to him or about people who have rejected him, like Kim Kardashian, will not endear him to the public. Therefore, he has woven his experiences into a political ideology. He is trying to connect with a larger group in order to gain allies. This gives him an audience for his message. As he is talking about areas of general interest, he can sneak in jabs at people who have hurt him. He can arrange these new allies of his to be against his adversaries. Kanye West doesn't really care about politics. What he really wants is to talk about himself. This interview is essentially just a trick so that people will listen to him. I think this case at least partially involves hurt feelings based on Kanye's separation from his ex-wife. However, in one way, he is still united with Kim Kardashian. They both represent themselves as important figures on issues they do not understand. That bond between them will never be shattered. Item number three, Kanye West has labeled people who have offended him in some way as liberal elites. To Kanye, these powerful figures represent a formidable adversary to the world. They have taken over companies and are involved in all types of business ventures. They are trying to destroy morality and only a great warrior can stand up against them. Kanye is this incredible warrior who will save people from these wealthy, evil conspirators. He is holding himself out as a hero who can be embraced by conservatives in the never-ending battle against extreme liberal ideology. Item number four, Kanye believes that he has a lot of good ideas, 
which would be very beneficial to society. He is destined to be president someday, but in the meantime, he believes that he should be an advisor to powerful figures. Kanye appears to have this rigid belief that he is incredible. The world should be amazed at his abilities. He is a savior who will lead the world into a golden age. For most of the interview, Kanye delivered a rambling cascade of incoherent thoughts. He appeared to be tangential, like his thoughts were moving pretty quickly from one topic to the next. From an outside observer, this is confusing. But to Kanye, all those words represent moments of genius. From his point of view, the public should be hanging on his every word, anxious to hear his next revolutionary idea. Item number five, what is my conceptualization of this interview? This is just a theory, my opinion. I think that this interview fits with much of the past behavior that we have seen from Kanye West. When looking at all the various aspects of the interview and putting them together, it is clear that Kanye is playing the victim. This is his most popular role. The problem for Kanye is that in order to play the victim effectively, he needs attention. In order to get attention, he needs to have something else to talk about other than being a victim. Therefore, Kanye is seeking attention in a way that he can get it. Controversial statements work pretty well for this purpose, and this is something that Kanye knows how to produce. I don't think that Kanye's desire to be a victim explains all his behavior in this interview. I think that there may be other factors at work, like his personality. Which brings me to item number six. Kanye's personality and the way he processes information may explain some of his behavior. It's clear that Kanye has various beliefs which he must integrate into a story that makes sense to him. For example, his Christian values are an important part of his identity. Kanye is also high in openness to experience. He is creative, thinks abstractly, is invested in fantasy, and is intellectually curious. When he is confronted with painful rejections, like the loss of his relationship with Kim Kardashian, he processes this loss through both his traditional values and his abstract thinking. When information gets processed through both of these attitudes, the result is what we see in this interview. Kanye has distorted his traditional values and dragged them into a realm of fantasy. It's like he's looking at traditional values through a lens of creativity, which is so distorted, it is essentially erratic. When something becomes too abstract, it loses any recognizable form. It becomes noise and chaos. Kanye has generated wild conspiracy theories based on looking at the world through this distorted lens. In addition, Kanye appears to be grandiose, and as I talked about in the previous item, he has traits of a victim narcissist. Therefore, this conspiratorial scenario can be solved through Kanye being exalted as a leader. Essentially, Kanye developed both the problem and the solution, but neither one is real. There are both liberal and conservative elites in the world, but they are not in any type of conspiracy against Kanye West. If there was a liberal conspiracy, their sights would be set pretty low if their primary objective was to bother Kanye. Of all the evil plans which are available, that is the best one that they could select. They just don't make evil conspirators like they used to. Kanye West wants people to feel sorry for him, listen to him, elevate him, and glorify him all at the same time. I think what happened here is that Tucker Carlson saw an opportunity to promote conservative values by interviewing Kanye. The problem is that Kanye West is not a good representative of conservative values. For example, as I mentioned, right after he did this interview, Kanye was banned from Instagram and Twitter for making anti-Semitic remarks. In this modern world of politics, everybody is so desperate for allies, they are no longer willing to be even a little bit selective. Tucker should have looked a bit harder for someone to interview. Moving to my final thoughts, just because somebody is a successful musician, it doesn't mean that people need to listen to them. Kanye West has taken advantage of his fame to bore people with his grievances. He has wasted the precious resource of time. When that wasn't enough, Kanye appointed himself a great warrior for humanity who will battle a non-existent problem. I think what happens sometimes is that people focus on the message and forget to challenge the credibility of the person delivering the message. 
Every message has a meaning, but it's not always the meaning intended by the messenger. Kanye West is attempting to communicate that he is the most important person in the world, but he has only succeeded in communicating that he is an individual who is suffering from a highly distorted perspective. His political views do not support conservatives, and they do not harm liberals. They are largely noise, which, when filtered out, leaves no discernible or meaningful content behind. Those are my thoughts on the interview with Kanye West. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.